G'day Frothers, welcome back to the bench. Uh, so a very special show today because finally doing some runtime testing in the DeWalt drills. Today we've got the DCH-263 and the DCH-133 and we're going to see how many holes they can poke in granite. Uh, so for my <clears throat> for my runtime testing so far I'm using granite because I'm a rock climber, I want to know how many holes you can get uh, but also it's a bit of a mystery, like there isn't really any data around that sort of stuff. Uh, everyone does concrete, and I will do concrete at some point too, but I'm just waiting for the right piece to come along. Um, so I'm doing 12 by 70 millimeters, which is about the right size for one of these uh, sleeve anchors, or that style sleeve anchor, and very common size to be using for rock climbing uh, fixed hangers. I set the depth using this little jig, 70 millimeters on there. Can't use a depth rod with these. Well, partly, I mean, we know how we know how the DeWalt depth rods are, but also rock isn't flat enough really to rely on it, so I just mark mark the drill bits like that. And as usual, we've got our uh, Dutois four cutters uh, coming in this uh, handy five pack, nice and cheap, and they they do the job the best out of uh, the drill bits that I've tried too. So, and of course, a full battery fresh off the charger. Uh, yeah, they are actually 18 volts in this country. They are authentic. That's just how they come in Australia. They're just labeled 18. They're exactly the same as the 20 volt ones you get in the States. Bit hard to say how full they are because DeWalt's only got the three stars on there, but whatever. So first up is the heavy hitter, the 263. Uh, this is actually the biggest capacity drill I got in my collection at 28 millimeters or inch and an eighth, I think that is. And three joules of impact. So let's see how she goes. One, two, three, four, sorry. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four. 24, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34. Oh boy. What a monster. Nice one. <laughs> All right. Wow, 34 holes. Um, that's, that's bloody amazing. And, uh, you know, I, I, I'm just super impressed with this modern brushless stuff. That's why I'm such a, a brushless evangelist, you know. I spent years hanging off ropes trying to install, you know, maybe 15 bolts a day with my old 36 volt uh, brush tool. And, dude, I just can't get over how good the modern brushless tools are. They really kick. So next up is the slightly smaller cousin, the DCH-133. Let's take a look. So the mighty DeWalt DCH-133 has done very well. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, that's a blow through, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, that one won't count, that just started. But this one, the tape slipped and it ended up drilling too deep. So let's say 32. So that's the original. So that's the original mark. Slip down there. So let's say 32 and a half. So very nicely done. And check this out. The battery's so dead it doesn't even flash. Oh boy. I hope I haven't killed it completely. But you know, that's why they say you shouldn't run your batteries totally to failure. Okay, so the battery is so dead it doesn't even flash. Uh, so uh, that's not a great sign. Doesn't feel too hot. Uh, didn't really seem to get that hot during the test. But the charger is flashing the yellow, so it's overheating apparently. So 
Yeah. Anyway, uh, let's see what the, th the heat gun reckons. Uh, okay, so it says it's around 48, uh, 48, 49. So that's pretty damn hot. Uh, you, you know, they are designed to do that, obviously, because they heat up when they're discharging. But still, uh, I'm going to whack it in the fridge for a few minutes and uh, hopefully we can revive it. Uh, all right, so it's been in the fridge for about half an hour. And it looks like it's cooled down enough to just charge normally, which is cool. Look. There you go, it's starting to work again, very nice. Uh, but this little charger here, as nice as it is doing the uh, three different voltages, or oh, two, two different voltages, so it does 12 and 18 volts, uh, it doesn't have any cooling on it at all. So it does tend to get pretty damn hot. And I have heard stories about uh, these burning people's uh, sheds down. So I'm just gonna get my little fan on there while it charges up, keep it nice and cool. Ah, these little fans are too good. Probably the second best thing Makita makes, honestly. Very nice. Very handy. Alright, so battery weirdness notwithstanding. Really nice job, 32 and a half. So uh, that's kind of why I chose these two to do together, because they are very similar tools, and I am trying to, you know, tease apart kind of how, how they differ. And um, it seems that the battery running super, super dead. Uh, didn't actually occur with that, uh, the, uh, the more expensive tool. I've never seen that before, I've never experienced that with any other brand. So I have a feeling that maybe that's part of the reason why this one is so cheap, because it doesn't have any like voltage regulator on there. Uh, other tools I suspect will have some kind of chip in there that'll, that'll measure the, the battery voltage getting below some level and then just tell it to stop. Whereas this one ran all the way down, it, um, it actually ran down uh, maybe five or six holes before it was fully done. And usually with brushless tools, they're sort of all or nothing. They'll just go and go and go. And then in the last like one or two holes, they'll start losing power. And that's when you generally want to stop using it because it's, you know, it's not great for the batteries. Uh, all right, so the data don't stop there. Don't you worry. Uh, we can get plenty of data out of a simple test like this. Uh, so I film from another angle with the sound and I'm able to check the waveform and we can actually time these. Uh, pretty similar to the way I normally do. It won't be as accurate because we're not using the depth rod, but but still, let's uh, let's see how quickly they actually drill the holes too. And uh, very nice. So the, the smaller drill, the 133, actually came out a little bit faster. And that is, uh, that's really interesting. So 15.8 seconds versus, you know, 16.3-ish. Now, this is a hypothesis that I had for a while in that um, this one doesn't hit as hard as the 263. So we got three joules of impact and 2.6 joules of impact on the smaller one. But this one actually hits faster. It's got 5,500 impact per minute versus 4,300 for the bigger one. So if you multiply those together, it's similar to power because it's energy per time. But watts, but it's not watts. Watts is joules per second. This is joules per minute. Just seems easier that way. So just because this one hits faster, it should theoretically drill a little bit quicker. You know, all things being equal. And I think I'm finally starting to, you know, tease apart all these different properties they've got. Mm. So another thing I try and keep an eye on is the heating when I'm doing these long tests. So uh, this one does rev at around 1500 RPM. So quite fast, it's probably faster revving than it needs to be. But then it's also got these giant vents. Uh, and you can, if you look in there, like that's just, that's the, uh, that's the ha hammer mechanism housing just straight in there. So uh, you may have noticed that I do um, sit there. I got my little my little blower uh, doing these tests. I do just sort of poke the blower in after a while when the tool starts to feel pretty hot. Um, and I also do take some images with my thermal camera along the way. 
So I'm, I'm trying to get a sense of how hot all these different tools run. Because, you know, overheating is a bit of a problem in some environments, especially, you know, here in Australia, it gets pretty bloody hot. Really, yeah, you know, they do seem to run cooler than some of the other brands I've tested. I would see some other tools get up to sort of 70, 80 degrees, but these ones are around 60, which is pretty good. So a bit hot to the touch, but not too hot. I don't know what the hell that is in Fahrenheit, um, but, you know, too hot to touch is usually 65, 70 degrees, something like that. So these guys would get up there, but not, not quite as hot as the other tools. Um, so yeah, again, really, really good stuff there. I, I do like how DeWalt just ventilates the hell out of their tools too. And uh, all right, so it sounds like we've got a dude with a whippersnipper coming in outside. So before it gets too noisy, I'm going to sign off. Thanks again for watching. Thanks from me and the gals here. And, uh, you know, if, if you're into this kind of stuff, do, do subscribe because it's basically the, the easiest way to help out me or, you know, any other YouTubers. Because, like, you know those ads that you watch at the start of the video? I don't get a cut of that revenue until I hit a thousand subscribers. So currently I'm working for Google for free, you know, 15, 20 hours a week. Um, so, yeah, do subscribe if you're, if you're into it. And uh, don't do notifications. I mean, we all get too many bloody notifications, right? Uh, anyhow, thanks for watching and I'll see you back at the bench for more of this kind of stuff.